Simplifying radical expressions. An expression that contains a radical is called a radical expression. The fourth root of 2x minus 7. It's called our radical. The index is 4, and that tells you what root you're taking. If nothing's written, it's a square root. Your radical sign is the actual root symbol. And the radican is what is under the root symbol. In this case, it's 2x minus 7. The expression parentheses nth root of x to the m power and nth root of x to the m power are in radical form. And the expression x to the m divided by n power is in exponential form. In this example, we're going to evaluate the radical. Part a, we have the cube root of negative 8. What we know is that negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8. So what that tells us is the cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2. For part b, we have the fourth root of 81. For this one, we know that 81 is 9 times 9, and that 9 is 3 times 3, which means 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So the fourth root of 81 equals 3. Perfect nth power. If our value of n is 2, which means we're looking at the second power, we have a perfect square. Some examples are x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth. Any exponent with a multiple of 2 is a perfect square. If our value for n was 3, we're looking at a perfect cube, which is x cubed, x to the 6th, x to the 9th, x to the 12th. Any exponent that is a multiple of 3 is a perfect cube. If the value of n was 4, we're looking at the perfect 4th power. Some examples would be x to the 4th, x to the 8th, x to the 12th, x to the 16th. And our exponent would be any multiple of 4. In this example, we want to write the expression in exponential form, then simplify the result. Part A, we have the cube root of x to the 21st power. Writing this in exponential form is going to equal x to the 21st, but then it's going to be divided by our root. So I have x to the power of 21 divided by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so this reduces to x to the 7th power. For part b, we have the 4th root of x to the 4th. Rewriting this in exponential form, I have x to the 4th power, and that's divided by my root, which is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so my answer is x to the 1st power, which I can write as x. Part C, I have the fifth root of x to the 20th power. Rewriting this in exponential form, I have x to the 20th power divided by my root, which is 5. Reducing, 20 divided by 5 is 4, so my answer is x to the 4th power. Simplifying radical expressions. Product property for radicals. If the nth root of a and the nth root of b are defined, then the nth root of a times b is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. In words, the nth root of a product is the product of the nth roots.
A radical with the index n is simplified when the radical does not have any factors that are perfect nth powers other than negative 1 or 1, and the index is as small as possible. Guidelines for simplifying radical expressions. If the radicand has more than one numerical factor that is a perfect nth power, select the largest one. If the radicand has more than one factor that is a perfect nth power with the same variable base, select the one with the largest exponent. Simplifying radical expressions. To simplify a radical expression with the index n, 1. Find perfect nth power factors of the radicand. 2. Apply the product property for radicals. 3. Find the nth root of each perfect nth power. 4. Write the radical with as small an index as possible. Power property for radicals. Let n be the counting number greater than 1. If n is even, then the nth root of x to the n power equals the absolute value of x. What that means is if we have the square root of 25, we want that to equal 5, even though negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. If n is odd, then the nth root of x to the n power equals x. What that means is if I have the third root of 8, that would equal 2. If we have the third root of negative 8, then that would equal negative 2. In this example, we want to simplify. Part A, we have the square root of x to the fifth power. Since the exponent is odd, this is not a perfect square. However, if I rewrite it as the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x, I now have the part of x to the fifth that's a perfect square. The square root of x to the fourth, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I have x squared times the square root of x. For part b, I have the square root of 98. 98 is not a perfect square, but part of it could be. So we want to go to our calculator. Since 98 is even, I'm going to first divide it by 2, and I get 49. Since 49 is a perfect square, we're going to rewrite 98 as 49 times 2. So that equals the square root of 49 times the square root of 2. Taking the square root of 49, my final answer is 7 times the square root of 2. For part c, I have the square root of 18 times x to the 13th. I can rewrite 18 as 9 times 2, and I can rewrite x to the 13th as x to the 12th times x. This gives me the square root of 9x to the 12th times the square root of 2x. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of x to the 12th is 6. So this equals 3x to the 6th times the square root of 2x. In this example, we want to simplify. Part A, we have the square root of 48x to the 4th, y to the 13th. For 48, we can go to our calculator. Since 48 is even, I'm going to divide it by 2, and I get 24. Divide that by 2 again, and I have 12. Since I divided 48 by 2, twice. I can write this as 4 times 12, which gives me 48. However, 12 has a perfect square in it as well. 4 times 4 times 3 also gives me 48, because 4 times 3 is 12. 
If I take my 48 and divide it by 3, I have 16. So the largest perfect square in 48 is actually 16. So we're going to rewrite this as 16 times 3. x to the fourth is a perfect square, so I wrote it under the square root with the 16. y to the thirteenth is odd. The perfect square portion of y to the thirteenth is going to be 1 less, which is where the y to the twelfth came from. My problem becomes the square root of 16x to the fourth y to the twelfth times the square root of 3y. Now I take the square root of what I can. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared, and the square root of y to the twelfth is y to the sixth, times the square root of 3y. For part b, I have the cube root of 40 times x to the third times y to the twelfth. We need to see what makes up our 40. Going to the calculator, since 40 ends in a zero, I'm going to divide it by 5 and I get 8. 8 is a perfect cube, so I'm going to rewrite my 40 as 8 times 5. For x to the third, 3 is a multiple of 3, so it's a perfect cube. y to the twelfth, 12 is a multiple of 3, so it is a perfect cube as well. I can rewrite this as the cube root of 8, x to the third, y to the twelfth, times the cube root of 5. The cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of x to the third is x, and the cube root of y to the twelfth is 4. Then I bring over my cube root of 5. If you're unsure, you can always rewrite the cube root of x to the third as 3 divided by 3, with the 3 in the denominator being your root, which gives us the x to the first, and my y to the twelfth divide by 3 since it's a cube root and that reduces to y to the fourth. Final answer 2x y to the fourth times the cube root of 5. For part c we have the fourth root of 81 a to the twelfth b to the twenty-eighth. The fourth root of 81 is 3 a to the twelfth to the fourth root, twelve divided by four is three, which is how I got a to the third. Then b to the twenty-eight power to the fourth root, twenty-eight divided by four is seven, so that's how I got b to the seventh. Final answer, three a to the third, b to the seventh. In these examples, we want to simplify. Part A, I have the fifth root of 32, a to the 15, b to the 30th. 32 is a perfect fifth root. a to the 15th, 15 is a multiple of 5. b to the 30th, 30 is a multiple of 5. The fifth root of 32 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 30 divided by 5 is 6. Final answer is 2 a to the third b to the sixth. For part b, I have the fourth root of x to the 21st power. 21 is not a multiple of 4. However, if I rewrite 21 as x to the 20th times x to the first, I will have a perfect fourth root. Fourth root of x to the 20th power. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so I have x to the 5th power times the 4th root of x to the 1st. Part C, I have the 3rd root of negative 8, a to the 22nd, b to the 29th. Negative 8 is a perfect cube, however, a to the 22nd power, 22 is not perfect cube. But I know that the nearest multiple of 3 to 22 would be 21. I can rewrite a to the 22nd as a to the 21st times a to the 1st. For b to the 29th, 
29 is not a perfect cube. I know that 21 is a multiple of 3. The next multiple up would be 24. The next multiple up would be 27. And then after that would be 30. So I can use 27. And then to get to 29, I would need 2 more. So I can rewrite b to the 29th power as b to the 27th times b to the second. So that gives me the cube root of negative 8, a to the 21st, b to the 27th, times the cube root of a, b squared. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 27 divided by 3 is 9. My final answer is negative 2, a to the 7th, b to the 9th, times the cube root of a to the 1st, b to the 2nd. Simplifying radical expressions. First, find the perfect nth power factors of the radicand. Second, apply the product property for radicals. Third, find the nth root for each perfect nth power. Fourth, write the radical with as small an index as possible.